Hello, everybody. I uh, hope you all are having a, a great day. Um, I had a great conversation with a patient of mine earlier this week, uh, and I just wanted to sit down and do a quick video and, and kind of go over it just to, a, to have it and, and to be able to, to share it with, with you all. Uh, and it was about stress. Uh, we were talking about um, ways to control stress, and, and some my patient was having a, a stressful day and 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 knowing wanting to know ways that we can control it. Now, stress takes lots of forms, of course. There's uh, physiological stress uh, uh, and mental stress and psychological stress and it kind of gets this negative connotation and, and uh, stress is just kind of a continuum of alertness or arousal um, that that kind of varies as our day goes on and, and we want to be able to have uh, uh, some stress is a good thing it, it, it alerts you and it gets you moving and, it, and it, it motivates you to do the activity and to and to, to move forward if you didn't have any stress you would just kind of just be a bump on a log, so to speak. So uh, that level of alertness for stress can be a good thing. However, when we live too far on that continuum of, of being overstressed or over alert or over aroused, it becomes uh, physiologically draining and psychologically draining. Um, so on the continuum, one end would be uh, I'm asleep, there's no alertness, there's no focus. Then we have we're kind of calm, uh, a little bit more stress allows us to be more focused and, and, and engaged and motivated to move. And then we get too far to the other end, and then we're on this, uh, you know, uncomfortable, over-aroused state of stress. And, and that continuum is something that you actually have some control over. And there's things that you can do that help you control where you kind of sit on that that continuum of, uh, of a sleep to, to over-stressed. Uh, and uh, the things that, that we like to use here are going to be, and things we've talked about in the past, your breath is a big one, uh, your posture is a big one, uh, and um, your vision is a big one. So those are the three things I want to go over real quick, just in terms of what kind of tools do you have that could help you regulate where you're sitting on this continuum. Uh, and, and to start with, I want to start with uh, just kind of a quick discussion of heart rate variability. And it's something that, that people um, kind of know a little bit about, uh, and they know it's a, a measure of um, health, and particularly autonomic health. And uh, what it is, is a measure of the, the, of the difference between heartbeats from, from beat to beat. So not just your overall heart rate, but between each successive heartbeat, there should be a little variability in, in the, the rate or the rhythm of your heart. Uh, a higher heart rate variability is actually healthy. A lower heart rate variability, where each beat is exactly the same, actually is a measure of uh, some autonomic uh, dysfunction or, or, or a, a poor uh, use of your autonomic system. And that stems directly from your breathing. So your heart rate changes based on what cycle of your breath you're in. So how that would work would be as you inhale, and you take a breath of air in, your diaphragm descends, and what that does is it increases the overall volume of your thoracic cavity. So there's more volume, so your heart gets a little bit bigger, your lungs get a little bit bigger, they pull air in, and because of that, the blood flows slower through your heart because it's got a bigger volume. Your, your, your heart recognizes that and sends a signal to your brain autonomically, and your brain says, I need to speed up that heart a little bit because I have of slower blood flow. Conversely, as you exhale, what's going to happen is your heart, your diaphragm is going to ascend. <sighs> Pressure increases in your thoracic cavity as air is forced out. Your heart gets a little bit smaller. The blood vessels get a little smaller. It's like putting your thumb on a hose. You'll get blood that will travel faster through your heart or into your heart. Your heart recognizes that and it sends a signal to your brain and your heart rate is going to decrease. So during inhalation, your heart rate increases. During exhalation, your heart rate decreases and that natural variability is healthy and it's a, it's a sign that your autonomic system is measuring the pressure within you well. So if we want to make sure that we're trying to control that, if we're in a state of stress where we're more alert, we're more focused, we're more we're, we're overwhelmed, that's a, that's a state where your heart rate's going to be elevated. So if we want to do some activity to help your heart rate decrease, we're going to want to be more exhalation focused. So activities where you're prolonging your exhale, you're focusing on exhale, you're taking a pause after you exhale to, to help your body perceive that reduced pressure in your thoracic cavity, increased faster blood flow so your heart can actually slow down autonomically. That's a good tool. If we're trying to improve alertness, you might work on deeper, good deep breaths. Some people, before they work out, they're going to they're gonna take big deep breaths. <laughs> And they're going to get real jacked up so they can go lift heavy weights. Most of us don't need to do that. Most of us need to have that exhalation focus. 
there's some good research on sighing and lots of other things that we might get into on, on other videos of other tools that you could use to get yourself uh, to calm down. But anyway, exhalation focused helps you with reducing your heart rate and can help you bring your level of stress down a little bit. Now, we know also that your posture has a direct impact on your ability to breathe. People who are in a more extended posture, their backs are tight, tend to have ribs that elevate, which is an inhalation bias. So extension is inhalation is heart rate that goes up because of this heart rate variability discussion that we just had. Flexion or a flexed posture where, where, where ribs come down and our spines get flat is more of an exhalation bias position, it helps get air out, which can help decrease your heart rate. So putting yourself in postures that are either extension based to lift heavy weights or flexion based to calm down can help those systems out. So if we want to get your spot or your stress levels to go down, we need to get into a more of a flexed posture and have some exhalation based activities. We have a lots of great ones sitting on a small step, blowing up a balloon. We've got standing against a wall, doing some wall reach activities. I'll, I'll maybe either attach some pictures or, or some, some other tools, or we'll talk about this at a later date. If it's something you guys are interested in, just, just let me know. The other activity that we talked about that you can use to control your stress comes from your visual system. Your visual system also has a direct impact on your autonomic level of alertness or arousal and vice versa. When you're aroused or alert, your brain gets really focused. You're trying to, to really pay attention to what your alertness is focused on. If a bear jumps in the room, I'm going to be really focused on that bear. My visual system is going to get really narrowed and, and focal on whatever it is I'm trying to take care of. That stimulates your autonomic system, is going to put you more in a state of inhalation or extension, and your stress levels are going to go up. So the more focused we get, the more we're thinking about focal activity, the more we're myopic, the more we're doing things where, where there's high levels of focal activity is going to be a very inhalation, extension, stress-based activity, which is not necessarily a bad term. But if that needs to be managed, visually, things that are more panoramic, things that are more peripheral, the things that are more, I'm seeing the whole world, not just focal activities, along with flexed exhale activities helps bring you that level of stress down. So if you're having days where you need to either get more alert so you can focus and do activities and do tasks, I just can't get to doing my homework right now because I just, there's nothing. Maybe some extension activities, some inhalation activities, some focused visual activities might help bring your level of stuff. up. Most of us need to work the other direction. Flexed based activities, panoramic peripheral visual activities and exhalation activities should be helpful. I hope that made sense and was helpful. But just know that you, the bottom line is you have some tools to manage your level of stress throughout your day. And remember, stress isn't a bad thing. It's just something that we need to be able to manage. And you have the tools. We all have the tools. You don't need anything fancy. You can do this all in real time, right when you need to do it, at the moment you need to do it. So I just wanted to, to, to get that out there because I think it's a good discussion and, and uh, just something to remind you guys that you all have some tools to deal with, with stress. I hope things are going well. Uh, if you have any questions, comments, let me know. Uh, send me an email, leave some comments uh, at the end of the video, and uh, we can discuss some of these topics further if you'd like to. Uh, thanks a bunch. Have a great day. Have a great week, uh, and we'll talk to you more soon later. Thanks.